So yeah. if I'm hearing you correctly, what we are saying here is that the parents are the number one mentor for every child. Mm -hmm. Yes. And after that, it now comes to you yourself becoming self-aware and know what you want in life Absolutely. and move on that path. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, I'm going to move to the next question. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's about what you just mentioned now. Uh, I know that, you know, sometimes I, I, I've written some mail, emails and I'll send it to you to vet it before I send it. And you will say, no, you're not sending this. And at the end of the day, I'll see the result of not sending that email that it would have spoiled so many things. So you are still that, don't pull trouble, child. <laughs> you are still at, 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 that, at that point, you know. Mm -hmm. So I want, I want us to talk about character. So how can a man build himself up to the space of understanding a woman and being a good father? Oh, good question. You always talk about emotional intelligence, and I want you yeah. to I want you to elaborate on that. Yeah, so let me start by saying I try not to make emotional decisions, but I try to apply emotional intelligence in taking my decisions. So let me start with that um, background. So a woman is the best companion a man can have. The moment you know how to communicate with a woman, you've won everything. She's ready to go all out for you. Women are very, very committed. They, they don't take risk as much as men, but whatever they decide to do, they do it till they get to the final outcome. Yes. So for me, I quickly learned how to communicate with women, with my wife, my sisters, my mother, knowing that once I get them on my side and they understand me, I have that support 100% and I can do, take, you know, new directions and they come with me. So communication is key. The second thing is let them be part of your vision. You cannot say you want to be successful while you have a vision in your head and you're moving by yourself and expecting a woman to come behind you. No, discuss your vision with them. Let them know their place in that vision. In fact, the, the truth is I try to bring my vision and my wife helps me to modify my vision. Then it becomes our vision, not mine anymore. So the, a, a, every man should look for a way to share their vision with their wife so that their wife can help them make it a family vision. And as soon as a woman gives you support for any of your vision or your dream, take it from me, you're going to be very successful but it is your responsibility to let them see where you're going. And sometimes you might be in the wrong direction. And because you've shared with them, the woman will always bring you back to that right direction. Yes, they have their own um, you know, reactions, but don't pay attention to those reactions that you think, oh, she's not listening and all that. Walk towards her listening, towards her understanding, because the amount of work you do to get her to understand will be worth it at the end of the day because once she gets it and she's on your side, man, you're good. Now, don't be too impatient with a woman because sometimes women, you know, take their time to buy into it. You have to learn to be as patient as you can. I'm a man, I can be very impatient when it comes to getting outcomes, but I've also learned to take it slowly sometimes because if you are in a hurry, she would think you're trying to get your way. You want her to rubber stamp you and move on. So again, take your time if you have time. And if you don't have time, let her know the exigency that is involved. And then she tells you, okay, give me time. You have to give her time. So it's a lot. So everything I've just said still comes under communication. Yes, sir. Now, from the moment you start a relationship, whether it's premarital or even in a marriage, you guys should learn to understand your norms. You can predict each other if you spend time understanding your norms. You can predict your person's next move and all that. So when or when a man does all that and he has a woman that is ready to open up and absorb and listen, 
and there's no, if the woman has concern or she has concerns, she should be able to, because you've, what you've done is you've created that room for trust and that room for the fact that, oh, I'm ready to tell you as much and I will listen. So if she knows you're going to listen, she'll tell you how she feels about an idea or your vision. So give them room to also hear their views. Yes. It doesn't weaken you as a man. It doesn't diminish you in any way. If she's your wife, she's a partner. She, that means you guys are equally vested in that future. So it's not like because, oh, she has this idea. Um, it's better than my idea. It doesn't make me a man. No bullshit. It has nothing to do with the muscle. It has nothing to do with the strength of your bone. It has everything to do with your emotional intelligence. If you have a partner that is willing to give you a haul, so achieving a common goal, why don't you take advantage? So people say you don't change your winning team, you don't change your winning strategy. If working with your wife gives you the strategy to win or to move forward, why don't you take that? Why do you want to have a stumbling block? Why do you want to give yourself problems when the solution is staring at you? I think for me and every other man out there, if you see a woman that is willing to assist you, to share in your vision, to help you modify your vision, whether individual, family, personal, um, collective, take advantage of it. I'm not exonerating that women don't have their own shenanigans. They may have it, but if you see a woman that is willing to support and work with you, man, that's golden. Take, the, take advantage of the opportunity. And a woman that knows that you trust her to give you the best advice will give you the best advice. And a woman that knows that that you allow, that you also trust, will be ready to swim and sink with you as well. So it goes both ways. But I'll tell the men to be the ones to push that process. And you see a woman respond accordingly. And we all get the best outcomes that we desire. So that's for your question. What's the second part of the question? I think I, must, I, think I missed that. You, you didn't miss it. Oh, I covered it? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, but um, have, I have another question from what okay. you just said. So, um, your wife is a doctor. Mm -hmm. So, she's not a mediocre. Mm -hmm. Like, she's my, she's my gist partner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we want to talk about some things mm -hmm. now we've had conversation you know and i know her now for some women um you don't want to have conversation with them mm -hmm. because uh what they say you will realize that they don't have anything to offer than you know Probably, I, I just I just want to get married. I just want to get married. And that's all they have to offer. Mm -hmm. What can you tell a woman so that we can balance it? Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, so I, I think, you know, so the thing is, um, the, the question is, what can I tell a woman? The question, I'll take the question back to the woman. What does she want in a marriage? What future does she envisage? Because she, let's not take it from her that she also has something that she wants to achieve. That she wants to just go into the marriage just to have babies. But if she has, if after having babies, what happens? Is everything going to just happen overnight? Mm -hmm. So when you throw that question back, you now realize that so many women have a lot. But because of fear and lack of self-confidence and lack of mentorship, they don't even know where to start. Um, and when you're scared, when there's fear, you can't think. Yes, sir. It's, you know, it covers everything. So what, what I try to do is I try to be forgiving in terms of trying to ask the young lady or the woman, what exactly do you want to do? You don't have to do it right away. You could have babies, then go back to starting your career. It's never too late. Like I said, the only time it's late is when you're dead. But you should have a plan. So mm -hmm. you don't wake up and your kids are grown up, they're out of the house, then what next for you? So when you have a plan, then you can have timelines and when you plan to do stuff. You, or you could also start your career as soon as you get married, but make sure you're working with your husband because you, you're not the only one, you're not living by yourself. 
So whatever you are doing, a man and a woman, as long as you are married, your plans should be interwoven. You should they should work together in in a, in a way where you can predict each other, you can cover for each other. It's like running a shift. You know, where this other person drops the ball, you pick it up. You know, mm. it's it makes it easy. So that young woman that you know people think nothing is there. She just wants to get married. Is because she has not had a conversation. Mm. She has not had that conversation of oh, when you get married, you actually are uh, you're a partner. You can bring something to the table. So bringing something to the table depends on what you want to do. Do you want to go business wise? You want to do a career. If you're going to have a career, you want to have a family, how do you balance? So those conversations are important because when you have that conversation, you will realize that there are some things that are not even clear to her. Mm. And that's why she appears as if she knows nothing. Mm. It's not that she knows nothing, it's because she's yes, not sir. had that right conversation. Yes, sir. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, I'm sir. not saying a young woman should go out there discussing with people how she's going to live her life with her husband. What I'm saying is, Give yourself opportunity, just like the program you're hosting right now. You can listen to that as a young woman. You can go on YouTube, listen to talks of you. Get a book to read. Empower yourself. Mm. When you see someone is successful at doing something, why don't you connect to that person? Give them a call, ask them questions. So information gathering is also part of empowering yourself. Mm. So it's a- nobody is useless. Nobody is daft or dumb. Mm-hmm. I just think they've not had the right conversation. And yes, sir. In the yes, process sir. of having a conversation, you gather information. When you gather information, you strategize. When you strategize, you have a plan. When you have a plan, you implement. When you implement, you get the outcome that you desire. It's mm-hmm. a process. So that's where I'm going to answer the question. I'm not going to be derogatory that she has nothing up there. I'll just put it at the point that she needs a conversation. Mm. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so yeah. much. Um, like this is deep like how, how we always say this is deep because um i wasn't i wasn't seeing it in that direction actually because i've seen i've seen quite a number of women that uh, will sit behind their phone and all day because they are married all day they scroll through sites doing nothing um so Obviously, if a man is able to give them direction, if a man is able to nurture them, if a man is able to ask them questions about what they want to do, Mm -hmm. they would definitely start thinking of how they want to come out and how they want to uh, do things for themselves. Thank you so much, Prof. I really appreciate you coming to the show today. Now, let's, let's go to, let's look at your career. You have a, a successful career and you're, you're full of ideas that sell. Yeah. And um, I, I want you to talk about leadership for a man. Mm-hmm. You know, because um, if you're not leading right, um, your wife and your children might not follow you. Mm-hmm. In, for you to be able to realize this much uh, career success and life success. So what will you tell a man about leadership? Because I've not seen you as a lion in the house. So how did you do this? How did you get it done? What should a man do if they want to get results? Yeah, I, I think the first thing is um, um, remember that leadership is people trust in you to do the right thing. And um, a leader by definition is someone that is showing their direction, vision, or um, taking a lead on anything that others would like to follow and emulate. So that means people trust your judgment Mm -hmm. and you're carrying responsibility. So there's responsibility, there's trust, there's judgment, right? So those things, so for me, I don't take them lightly. Because, like I said, I always think about the outcome. What do I want to do? And what's the process that will take me there? And the moment I'm able to do that, the next thing is I try to carry others along. I run my family and my business and my lab and my research the same way. This is where I'm going. I start with where I'm going, which is the outcome. This is how I think we should do it. 
Now, everybody's not going to do it the way I've, I've done it or the way I want to do it, but they all know where I, what I'm trying to achieve. Then I trust each person to be able to do it to the best of their ability and I provide the resources, the time. I provide time a lot to people I work with. The time, the resources, whatever you need to get it done your own way and pace. Yes. But I will always remind you that the world is not going to wait forever for you. Mm. It means you should also be responsible in terms of how you manage your time. And I take the lead. I also take responsibility. Where we fall, I, I, I'm the first to take that responsibility. Where we win, I'm the first to praise the team. Yes. So once they know that, they follow my lead because they know that I am going to look out for them. When they win, I celebrate them. When we lose, I take responsibility. But I also ensure that we evaluate what we've done wrong and what we've done very well. So for me, leadership is something I take very seriously with, in everything I engage in. People say, oh, you are doing so many things at the same time and you're successful because I have learned to trust people with what I'm trying to achieve and I let them work with me. I have never done anything by myself. I have always worked with others to achieve what I have in mind. Sometimes my wife tells me, oh, you got plug in console here, come and download. Because you have so much in your head. And I tell her, I said, yes. But as soon as I see someone I can trust, I download it and work with that person to achieve it. Yes. And that's why people think, oh, how come it's successful? It has been there. I have been processing it. I have been working on it. I just haven't found the people to work with. As soon as I find them, I just bring out all, all I have I have had in my head. And we work together and it just goes, you know, A, B, C, and D and all that. That's why I, I, I read a lot of books. I read every day. I read the first thing I do in the morning, I read the holy book. I'm a Muslim. I read the Quran, a chapter each day. I read a few pages of a book. I love reading people's biographies, but I read other books as well. I read a few pages. Sometimes if I'm lucky, a whole chapter. Sometimes three pages, sometimes. But I just read something that is not related to my work because I need something to give me diverse information to help me think. And I take a lot of work. I work almost every weekend if the weather is good. And when I'm working, I'm meditating. I'm asking myself a few questions. I'm trying to answer questions. And when I die, the idea seems concrete in my head. And I get the right people to work with. I put it out there. And what you people see is the outcome. But that process started years ago, started days ago, weeks ago. And that's how you show leadership, vision responsibility, trust. So it's so much that makes a good leader, but those are things I've applied and they work very well for me. I trust people and they trust me. Mm. And it's not everybody I've trusted that I've delivered, some of them have failed me, but I've not taken those failures, I've taken them as lessons and I've learned to do it differently. So yeah, you're right, I'm, I've been lucky, I've been fortunate, things have worked out, but it takes a lot. All these things that you're seeing started with me as an individual, thinking them multiple times and looking for people to work with me. And I have, I'm still making mistakes though. I still, you know, I learned my lessons as well, but I don't give up. I still try to, you know, make it work, look for the right people. And I've been fortunate. So many people have been good to me and together we've achieved a lot. So I'm grateful. And in all, I still give glory to God. Because again, God gave me all this vision, the strength, the health, and the people. So I'm grateful. Anu Moriba. Anu Moriba. Okpelo da yero. Okpelo yero. Thank you so much, bro. Uh, um, the, the, you have said so much because I was going to ask a follow-up question that. Tell us about routine and time management. Mm -hmm. And I think you have mentioned that, you know, you have talked about your routine. Uh, but can you briefly talk about time management? Uh, you've taught me a lot about time management. So can you, can you just uh, talk about time management? Yeah, um, I cannot overemphasize this. And like I just told you, said I read the Quran, I read a book. 
So everything is scheduled. I don't just, you know, wake up, do everything is scheduled because there's so much time in there's just 24 hours and you still have to sleep. You have to do other things. So why for when I wake up in the morning, I already have a routine. And I try to stick to that routine because it makes you disciplined. Mm -hmm. And when you're evaluating your outcome, it's because of what the input is. So first thing I do is to pray, to read the only book, then read a few pages, then look at my calendar because I put stuff on my calendar. And in the morning, when it's 7 a.m., I switch from all these other routine to family. Mm -hmm. It is family until my kids are in school. Then from once I drop my kids off in school, it is work. I follow my, my schedule. Everything's on my calendar. Everything I do, whether I'm teaching, I'm discussing with my students, I'm writing, I'm reading literature, I'm reviewing. Everything is scheduled. Even my lunch time, I put it on my calendar. That's when I have lunch. I could use my lunch time for a meeting, but that's when lunch is scheduled for. Mm -hmm. I put everything up until 6 p.m. And once it's 6 p.m. and I'm, I'm back home, is family. Everything I want to do with family. And I sleep early because I wake up early. So after 8 p.m., you're not talking to me because I'm already sleeping. I can't sleep. Up. So I've already closed my mind to anything that has to do with brain work and processing. Till the next morning at 3, uh, 4 a.m., sometimes 3 a.m., but I'm trying to stay later till 4 a.m. so I can catch some more sleep. So let's say for now, I'm trying to keep it at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. the next day, I've started again. Yeah, prayer read the whole book, read a few pages of any other book. And once you get to 7 a.m., start family. From family, once kids are in school, start day, my day job. The research, the teaching, you know, student time and all that, meeting, faculty and all that. Then 6 p.m., back to family time. So I do that Monday to Sunday. So I don't say because it's weekend. My routine is the same. The only thing I don't do on Saturday and Sunday is I don't teach school work. Well, I teach some other classes when I'm teaching, maybe I'm invited to give talks abroad. So I, some of them are on Saturdays and Sunday. But well, I still have that routine. And it has really helped me because I use that to measure my outcome. And I've been doing this, believe it or not, since I was a young boy. I've always had a routine that starts in the morning. Mm -hmm. And... I've, and my kids too have that routine now. So my daughter calls it regimented life, but they know, you know what they should do at certain hours, mm. Monday to Friday, and they know what they do on weekends. And they've started that since they were three. Mm. You can imagine doing it uh, from three to, mm. my daughter is 18 now for 15 years. So it's a routine mm. for her, it's in her head. So, and that's what I've done for myself as well. So mm. time management, I cannot go and exercise that. Nice. Because it is one way to keep yourself disciplined. Otherwise, every time before you know it, it's night, it's dark. You know, the next thing is, nice. you know, it's done. You know, 